Hey guys, it's your girl Andrea Griffin Rogers here with another spiritual wellness check in that God gave me today. And He said, Flow down blessings. Flow down blessings. But it requires work. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people pray and they beg and they plead. We all want blessings from God for various reasons. However, God says, I have it for you because my promises are yes and amen. But there's going to be some work required. You know, I'm always talking about, if you've been following the podcast, Agents of Revival, which is streaming on all platforms, cheap plug, I know. But um, I'm always talking about how um, life is like a jigsaw puzzle. And God may give you that, um, that puzzle box with the beautiful picture on the front. And so you like, yes, you know, we all have that dream, that desire in our mind of like something that we, you know, hope to uh, attain. And uh, and so God shows you shows you it and it's beautiful. And you're like, yes. OK, God, bring it when when. But most people don't realize that just like an, an earthly puzzle box, like an actual puzzle box. When you lift that lid off, so the bright, pretty picture of what it's supposed to look like is on the front of the cover. When you lift that lid off, you're like, uh, you lying. <laughs> it's over a thousand pieces in here. What am I going to do with this? You got to assemble it. There's some assembly required. And so it's just like with God. Like, he's not going to just give you the blessings you pray for because you asked him for it. There's some assembly required. You have to become the person that can sustain it, steward it, and attain it. Because he's not going to just give you something so you can just drop the ball and lose it. You know, I think it's in Peter that talks about, um, either first or second Peter, <clears throat> excuse me, that talks about how he's not being, um, he's not being slow for, um, for nothing. Like he's being slow for a purpose. Because he doesn't want anybody to perish. And so a lot of us, you know, we've been praying for things. We're waiting on things. And we're like, uh, hey, yo, God, when, when, when you coming? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> but what I've been learning from God is patience is a virtue. I know a lot of people don't like that word. It's like a dirty word in today's time where people want, you know, everything microwave. You know, everything just quick, fast, easy. But Everything worth having is worth working for. And I learned that from my sister girl from back in the day. I called my sister girl, but she is nowhere near my age. Um, and that is, um, oh my goodness, I'm drawing a blank right now. See, if my mama was here, she'd be able to tell y'all who sing that song. But she says it in a song called After the Pain or After the Rain, one of them. But I can't think of who. I'm thinking of right now. And she used to be one of my favorite singers growing up. Anywho, let me just get back on point <laughs> to the message. God is saying he has blessings to flow down for you. But you got to be willing to take a step forward. You got to be willing to um, launch out in an act of faith. And even when you launch out in an act of faith, there's still some work that needs to be done. Because again, you have to become that person, that man or that woman that is needed at that level. And a lot of times we're praying for things and we have no idea what it takes to be on that level. You may be looking at somebody else that um, is at that level and they're really successful at that level. And so you're like, oh, I want to be there. I think I could do it. You may can do it, but you don't have what it takes right now. That doesn't mean you can't eventually have what it takes, but it takes work. It takes taking a step and as you continue to move forward in the way God has you move forward eventually you get to the point where he saturates you so completely that you become a new person you don't even look like the person who you once was because you become a new person that had to become who you need to be on that level so that you could sustain it but God wants to flow down blessings to you and so there's the word out there for somebody who felt like giving up today don't give up don't quit God still has it for you. God still has better for you. He still has some plans for your life. So don't quit because things are taking too long. Be patient. In the midst of your waiting season, learn how to wait well. Ask God what you need to learn right here, right now. So that you can become who you need to be at that level to steward well what he gives you, what you're praying for. 
And then also ask him, which you should do that before you do the stuff I just gave you. God, do you really have this for me? Or is it just my desire? Because a lot of times we're praying for God to flow down blessings to us. And it's not even his desire for us. It's our desires, our plans. Again, we saw somebody else with it growing up or even recently. So you're like, ooh, I want that. But you may not have either what it takes to sustain it or you may get it and it may destroy you. And you don't even know. And so God's rejection is his protection. And you're thinking like, oh, God must don't want to give me nothing good. No, he's protecting you for something you cannot see because God sits at a different vantage point than we do. You know, if God's an eagle, as it's talked about in the Bible, then we are in a sense like every other bird that fly, flies lower than an eagle. Eagles can fly much higher. So therefore, they have a different vantage point than any other bird that flies lower towards the ground, even birds that just walk on the ground and don't fly. And so you got to understand that if God is delaying something or denying something, then it's for a reason. And you can ask God for wisdom. We learn it in James 1. He has no problem with you asking him for wisdom. But make sure when you ask him for wisdom, when you ask him for understanding and strategy as to either how to go about achieving that goal that you have or God, why is it um, denied or delayed? Make sure that you're asking him wholeheartedly and not slightly asking him, but still trying to do it in your own strength. Mm -mm. You don't get far with God with that. You have to have full surrender to his authority so that he can do it in his way he wants to do it. And so this makes me think of um, this makes me think of a story in the Bible. Go with me to Ezekiel forty-seven. I was actually studying this with God the other day, and when I was listening to it, because um, you get something that's so different when you listen to scripture versus when you're just reading it uh, silently for yourself. And when I was listening to it, I heard something totally different than I heard before, and I was like what okay god that just blew my mind like again you want to flow down blessings to us but it is about our faith to be willing to go in deeper and going in deeper is not just about going in um harder or in brute force strength uh swimming faster and harder to get to that end goal going in deeper is a spiritual thing it means going deeper with god because Matthew 6 33 says seek first my kingdom and live righteously or seek first my face in certain translations and live righteously live the way i'm telling you to live in right standing with the father and then everything else will be added unto you and so he doesn't want you before that you get to that matthew 6 33 he says a few verses up to store your treasures in heaven not here on earth and so a lot of times we're looking at the things of earthly matter and god's trying to call you up higher to view and to um and to steward well and to want desire that's the word i want to use desire the things that are of his kingdom because when you desire things of, that are of his kingdom and you desire to do things in the way he tells you to do it, then everything else will be added unto you, even the things that you desire. If it's still in God's will. But if it's about something that's going to give you glory, then that's not God's will. But if it's going to give him glory and give you victory, then that's in God's will. And God says, yes, I have it for you, but I need you to go in a little bit deeper. I need you to be willing to draw closer to the father, draw closer to me than drawing closer to the thing. And why does God do that? Because he doesn't want us to get it and then worship it. Get it, get whatever that it is that you're praying for. He doesn't want you to get it, achieve it, attain it. And then you make that your idol. And then you become, you know, prideful and big headed thinking that you made it happen in your own strength and you don't give God glory. And then you stop worshiping God because that happens. Sometimes people will pray for God to do something and then God does it. And then you forget God. And so God doesn't want people to go through that. He doesn't want us to perish and he doesn't want us to stray away from him because the whole, the Bible talks about how it's blasphemy to, um, go against the Holy spirit. And if our bodies are a temple where the Holy Spirit lives and resides, then if we get the thing that we're praying for and we reject God, you're rejecting the Holy Spirit. And it's very sinful in God's eyes. And so he doesn't want us to live a rebellious life where we're rebelling against him. That it's okay if you're rebelling for Jesus and, uh, you know, against something that's a stronghold that he's telling you to rebel, you know, rebel against. But you don't want to rebel against Jesus, you know, like. You can rebel with Jesus for Jesus, 
by Jesus. <laughs> you know, what would that be like F J U J or something? You know, like the clothing line. <laughs> and you know, I think it's F U B U the clothing line. But you know, it God wants to do something in your life, but it takes partnership in order for these blessings to flow down. Because God never gives us the final product. Just like the jigsaw puzzle, he gives you the pieces. And then it is up to you not to think like in the earthly puzzle box that you can just lay everything out and then just slowly put it together. No, because there's no instructions in the box for a reason. Because God said, I need you to come up to me, come deeper in me so that I can give you that instruction so that little by little, you'll be able to put the pieces together in the way God told you to put it together. Because sometimes with God's plan, the pieces of the puzzle may not look the same way that it is on a puzzle box. And so you may start putting it together thinking that, okay, I'm going to follow the way that it looks on a puzzle box. And that wasn't God's plan. God had a better plan that may have even taken you less time had you went deeper in him to get the instructions, to get the strategy. Because God has strategy for us all. He never calls us to anything and equips us for anything that he has not given us direction, clarity, vision, and strategy for. And so if you feel called to do something, you feel um, you have a, a purpose in your life, you feel like you have a dream or a goal you want to achieve, then you need to go to the Father God and ask him for that strategy on how to manifest it. Because I guarantee you, no matter how many books you read, uh, you know, that the world has created of, of how to guide to do this is not the way God wants to do it. You know, I think about um, when I first started my podcast, Agents of Revival, um, I didn't know anything about podcasting besides listening, <laughs> you know, going on Apple Podcasts, push play, and, th and that was it. That's all I knew. And so it was like, God, you calling me to do a podcast? Can I even talk that long? <laughs> I don't even know what I'm going to say. But I prayed about it. And God has spoke this to me a few years before I even started the podcast. But it took that time, not only for me to get my faith up to believe what God was calling me to do, but then also to then ask God for strategy and then listen and wait. Because a lot of times God may not speak immediately, but he wants to see how bad do you want the things that he wants for you? How, how badly do you want the plans that he has for you? And so he may release the instructions immediately. And then there may be a delay, but in that delay is not God's rejection. It's God saying, come up higher, come up deeper. How bad do you want it? And how bad do you want me more than that thing? And so I had to keep going to God and asking God for strategy and, okay, how do you want me to do this? God, what am I going to talk about? God, what should this podcast be about God? Like, and I had to sit with him in that time to really get the download, the strategy from him. And then when he gave it to me, then he also gave me the instruction, the, the confirmation that said, okay, go now. He will tell you when it's the exact time to go. So we don't have to worry about like missing it or, um, or trying to hurry up and get to a certain, you know, place because you feel like everybody else is running faster than you. No, 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 no. God says, go at my pace. Don't go through the door without me. You know, I'm not going to go into full detail, but I remember God even spoke that to me in a vision where he was like a, a parent holding my hand. And he said, don't go through the door without me. God has opened door for those who are called by his name and who live according to his purpose to do his will in the earth. But even in that open door, he says, don't go through it without me, because you don't know what you're going to face on the other side of that doorway. You don't know what you're going to face on that other side. When You don't know what you're going to face when you get to that ascending or ascension level. That next level you've been praying for. That thing you've been praying to achieve. You don't know what you're going to face. The warfare you're going to face. The people you're going to face. The troubles you're going to face. The problems you're going to face. You don't know. But he does. That's why like a loving parent to a toddler. You don't let the toddler just run out in the street because they want to run out in the street because they just learn how to walk. No, you have a different vantage point. You can see the obstacles, the cars coming by that they cannot see. So they have to hold your hand while you guide them along the path. God does the same thing with us spiritually. He's holding our hand to guide us along the path. But we have to be willing to allow the flow from God to come through our life. And in that flow is going to be balance. Understand that God gives you balance to do all things well. The world tells you to hurry up, go do it fast, be quick, do this at this time, hurry up. 
That's not God. You rest when you did. Fear FOMO, fear missing out. There's no fear in Christ Jesus. If there's fear, then that means you have not fully come into the full revelation of who he is. But there is no fear in, in Christ Jesus. And so God said, you don't have to be afraid of missing it. Just trust in me, hold my hand, and let me guide you. Like footprints in the sand. If you never read that poem or heard that poem before, go uh, Google it. It's a beautiful poem that talks about where a person thought that they were just living their life by themselves. And they only saw one set of footprints in the sand. And and then the Lord reveals to them when they realize the Lord is the one that, that's been carrying you the whole entire time. The footprints that you see were the Lord's and not your own. Because again, a loving father, which he is, will carry you along the way. He gives you the strategy. He gives you the download when you allow it. But there has to be a free flowing between you and God. That means that there has to be patience. You have to wait on the Lord to flow the stream your way, to flow the, the water your way, to flow the direction your way, the download your way. He may give you the puzzle box. He may give you the vision, the big plan, the goal. But you putting the pieces together by yourself may not be the way God has it. Because even for me, when he first called me into ministry and he first gave me this idea of agents of revival, I thought it was going to go one way. And, you know, from the way he gave me the puzzle box. And so I said, OK, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you know, in that sense. And God says, no, 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 we're going to do A. Then we might jump to C. Then we're going to go to Z. Then we're going to shoot back to B. And it's like, wait a minute, God. <laughs> OK, <laughs> you all over the place. But that's how God works. Because it's not about us flow. It's not about God getting on our flow. We got to get on God's flow. And so I want to give you guys the scripture, Ezekiel 47, um, where it talks about the river of healing. But it talks about the way in which um, God kind of spoke the same message of flow down blessings that I'm giving you today to Ezekiel um, by showing him like physically what it's like to go deeper and every, and every time Ezekiel went deeper he got new revelation he saw something different he learned something different he got more information and so it says uh in my vision a man brought me back to the entrance of the temple there I saw a stream flowing east from beneath the door of the temple and passing to the right of the altar on its south side the man brought me outside the wall through the north gateway and led me around to the entrance the eastern entrance there I could see the water flowing out through the south side of the east gateway. Measuring as he went, he took me along the stream for 1,750 feet and then let me across. The water was up to my ankles. So this is, I'm going to pause right here because this is kind of like how it is to start a baby level faith. You know, you start a baby level faith where God, you know, gives you an idea or, or calls you closer to him. And so you say, okay, God, I'm going to trust a little bit to just like you would in terms of the ocean. Get your feet wet just a little bit because you don't know how cold the water is. You don't know how, you know, um, how, you know, rough the water might be, the, the waves may be. And so you don't even know what's in the water yet because you didn't get that deep. So you're like, okay, I'm going to just get my feet wet a little bit. But then God says, okay, now draw a little bit closer, come a little bit deeper. And so Ezekiel continues on. Um, this time the water was up to my to my knees. After 1,750 feet, it was up to my waist. And then he measured another 1,750 feet and the river was too deep to walk across. It was deep enough to swim in, but too deep to walk through. And so what he's basically saying through this text as it applies to this message today is every time Ezekiel was willing to go a bit deeper, every time Ezekiel was willing to draw closer to the father, then he saw that the waters became even deeper and deeper and deeper to the point where he was in so deep that he felt like he could swim. But notice that it doesn't say he drowned. Why? Because as he went, he built up trust in the father that as I'm drawing deeper into you, you'll carry me through like footprints in the sand. You'll carry me through. You'll make sure that I do not drown in, in this drawing closer to you. And every step of the way, it's, it's not only just measurements, but it's also instructions because God will always give you instructions wherever he sends you. You got to be patient enough to receive that download from him. And so before I go, I want to give you this. 
Uh, Proverbs 10, verse 21, the words of the godly encourage many, but fools are destroyed by their lack of common sense. The blessing of the Lord makes a man rich and he adds no sorrow with it. Drop down with me to um, verse 27. Fear of, the Lord's, fear of the Lord lengthens one's life, but the years of the wicked are cut short. The hopes of the godly result in happiness, but the expectations of the wicked come to nothing. Don't become wicked and think that I got this. I don't need God. I got this. I'm going to figure it out on my own. I'm going to put the pieces together on my own. I'm going to walk through the door on my own because you may be walking through a false door. Lately, I don't know why I can't get away from it, but I've been giving this example on my podcast of Looney Tunes. <laughs> and if you guys remember the Looney Tunes show, and I haven't seen this show in years, but the Looney Tunes, um, when it came down to two characters, Wally Coyote and uh, the Roadrunner, sometimes Wally Coyote would like take the like somehow take the road and like direct it towards a rock instead and then paint the rock so that the rock would like look like a road so that when the road runner would run and turn into what that road runner thought was the road he would hit the rock but sure enough the road runner would run through it but then when Wally Coyote tries it he hits the rock the moral of the story <laughs> is that you may see somebody else going the wrong way that God didn't tell you to go and so you think, oh, well, I could flow that way, but you don't know that the blessings of the Lord will not flow with you that way because God is only obligated to, um, to pour out blessings where he directs you. He's not obligated to pour out blessings where you direct yourself. And so if you decide to go the wrong way, because you're looking at somebody else thinking, well, they went through, they went through that door. It seemed fine for them. You don't know that that doorway probably may be leading them into a pit. Just like the example. Because there were some times where Wally Coyote would, um, you know, draw the street line, basically. And it would be right over a cliff. A cliff, excuse me. So you never know how the enemy is going to use what you think is an opportunity to trap you. Everything that good is not God. Everything that glitter ain't gold. And so you got to understand that. You need that strategy. You need to go along with God, holding his hand every step of the way, asking him, Lord, how are you flowing down these blessings to me? And what is the, the what is the directions? What is the instructions? What is the strategy? Give me the tools I need so that I may steward it well and walk it out well. He will give it to you if you ask and if you're patient enough to hear it. So, may the Lord bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord God be gracious to you, show you his favor, and give his shalom, give his peace. Take care. Love you guys. Bye now.